Hi everybody, I was gonna show you how I am, what I call editing, um, or kind of going back to and sort of revamping um, my mark making. So this is a watercolor base and these are again, um, my little draft Oracle deck cards. So it's on 140 pound uh, artist loft, which is Michael's very affordable in-house brand paper. And I'm be, I, I will be putting these Oracle decks into uh, 3.5 by 5.5 inches, I believe. So I just kind of gave myself an outline. So when I do uh, upload these images to the computer, when the painting is done, um, they will be, you know, close to the right fit um, resolution wise. Like I'll just be able to get um, a little bit better of a fit um, for the composition. Um, so what I'm doing right now, I am getting this bronze paint on my brush and I had done sort of this little lotus flower and I just decided that um, I loved it but I wanted to add watercolor. So um, I had used a jelly roll pen over top after I did the uh, base watercolor. So I made sure that the base watercolor was really dry so um, you want to make sure when you're using paint pens or mixed media pens, uh, permanent inks or non-permanent inks, um, whatever you're using, unless it's water soluble, like um, it moves with water, uh, you want to make sure your base is dry. And uh, just another tip that you cannot paint with water soluble materials over top of acrylic paint because acrylic paint is plastic primarily um, and watercolor obviously is water-based so you can always put acrylic paint over watercolor but not the opposite and there's this little uh, term in mixed media where they say you can layer um, uh, fat over lean um, so meaning when you have like oil paints or water soluble um, or sorry, oil, oil sticks, um, you can put oil stick over top of acrylic, but if you put oil stick underneath acrylic or watercolor, um, it won't fully dry. You can still kind of get away with doing some neat techniques, but it just won't ever dry. So that's, I've kind of gone off on a tangent here, but I love the way this looks with this bronze um, in this little, sort of what I think is a lotus flower. It just kind of was a flower I practiced a long time ago and kind of just was easy for me to just draw. I might add in some of my um, Kuretake, so K-U-R-E-T-A-K-E, -E, Kuretake Japanese uh, paints, because they're like, again, more of an opaque watercolor. I'm just gonna drop in this metallic sort of in the middle, which I love. And uh, when it dries, I'll decide if I wanna go over it with white a paint pen or or what but I'm just gonna sort of leave that for now and um, decide how I want to finish this piece up I'll probably let this area dry um, I did smudge this area over here so I might want to add in something just to kind of cover up that smudge even though it's not really a big deal but um, because this is going into print um, into a professional oracle deck that I hope to sell um, I really want to make sure that it's my best work so I'm usually not so precious about my paintings but um, I just want to make sure it's fairly clean so I don't have to do any editing um, online so what I'm going to use is actually um, one of my little tricks so I'm going to grab this is called a gelato and it's a water soluble crayon and it's made by Faber Castell and I just bought a pack of these um, at the uh, local craft store here in Canada and um, I don't use them with how they're intended to be used so um, the intention for these I'll show you so this is I'll just wait for this little guy to dry this is watercolor paper actually is it I think it is um, anyway, it's like a chapstick and you can really rub it on and the way it's intended is to mix and blend and add water and create watercolor with. Um, so that's sort of an example of like um, 
what you can do with these. Although I don't find the quality is great. You can see you need a really high, high quality watercolor paper just because it didn't evenly disperse. It left sort of this mark, which can look really great in mixed media. Um, so there is a place for them, um, but I use them for a different purpose. So what I like to do is I look at the painting I'm working on and I see where do I want to put some extra color that I didn't initially put with watercolor. And I just sort of scrub it on fairly thick. And you can see I'm bringing in that same bronze color. This is called... Oh, actually, this isn't the color I thought, but that's okay. <laughs> I thought I was going to use iced rose. So the good thing is I can actually remove a little bit with my uh, paper towel, even though the color matches really well. I wanted a shimmer. And so because this watercolor paper is a little bit more, a little cheaper, um, I'm not going to take that off with watercolor to fix it. I'm just going to add this color that I intended and you can sort of see the shimmer. Um, what I'm gonna do is use my artist sponge with the same color on the end, and I'm just going to rub it in as though it's just an intentional, intentional rubbed in spot. And I just love this already so much more because this was sort of a smudge, it didn't look great, and I've been able to pull in that same color so it's very appealing to the eye. And um, I'm just going to add a little bit, I'm just going to clean up this area here, knowing that watercolor will move, so to be careful not to hit that green watercolor line too much. And then I'm just going to add in more of that bronze. Whoops! Ooh. That's okay. That's all right. I'll practice. Um, so, you know, I'll probably wait for this to dry. To kind of go over it a bit more just because that lower petal I feel like needs a bit more uh, love. <laughs> when you're working on cheaper watercolor paper it doesn't have as much forgiveness so um, sometimes you can take the fibers off so you always want to dab. If you feel like you've made a little mistake and you want to uh, you want to fix it um, you just want to dab. And so I'm gonna let that dry and then go back to it. That's another really good practice is um, just to work on a few paintings at a time. And then that way you don't get too excited and like me, go in over top while it's not dry. This is another little Oracle deck card that I started to create. And I wanted to use the, um, I was just craving like a bright green. So I grabbed this water soluble uh, crayon. This is in Kiwi. And this is just another trick in my work that um, I'm happy to share and look at how just adding that in uh, it just like makes me so happy and I try to add the color in a few places um, no more than three places maybe just a little bit over here um, just because it's a real pop of color and um, then I want to go back in with maybe some neutrals um, I loved that ice um, or sorry, that's nougat again. I love this iced rosé and the reason for it is it's a bit metallic and right now I have a little bit of metallic in here from my watercolor base, um, but I just want to add in a little bit more. So I'm going to add a little bit here, maybe a little bit up here, maybe a little bit up here. And this is a great way if initially you added a color you didn't really like, you can go in over top smudge this with your finger. I use an artist sponge just because it helps me. Um, again, I've invested in a little bit more, um, more expensive materials because I can, because I'm selling my work. Um, but you can just use your finger just as easily. And I believe they're non-toxic. Um, the other thing I see is I want to add a really light pink. I want to bring back, bring back that light pink that I had. So I'm going to go into my Kirataki. This pink was well loved. This is more like a gouache. So it's more like a, um, um, an opaque watercolor. So I love that. I might add a little bit more up here, maybe a little bit up here because I don't know, I'm loving pink right now. Not just because Pantone color of the year is magenta, but 
just pink makes me really happy. So I'm gonna add that in. And then I'm gonna, again, let this dry. Um, one thing I always do is, this is Posca pen, a red water-based Japanese paint pen. Um, so you can, there's paint pens sort of at the store everywhere now, but the key with these paint pens, store them horizontally, always make sure you properly activate them. So there's lots of videos on YouTube about how to do that. Um, this is a point, sort of a medium size point, um, but it's called uh, Posca. So really high quality Japanese paint pen. Shake it up really well. And this is the third time I'll be going over this particular um, little moon or this little circle, whatever you want it to be, sun. Um, and so the key is to go over several times to get that really painterly look. Um, and I'm gonna use the white Posca because right now I just have a desire to bring this guy out a little bit more. Um, maybe right here. And I might add in another bird or butterfly, whatever you want that to be, maybe up here. Um, so that's probably how I'll go back to this particular painting. And um, this one is almost dry. I'll probably add in another little rose. Um, so I'm going to just go to, I'm just gonna move things around here. I'm just deciding what color do I wanna put in here. Um, I am gonna, you know what, I'm gonna add my dot work in here now, I think. And I'm gonna do dot work through, um, do I wanna do it through the brown? Maybe I wanna do the brown. And so I'm using my fine Posca paint pen. It's hard to find good white pens that go over paint. Um, jelly rolls are pretty good but sometimes they just don't work. And when you're spending money on them, um, I would recommend Japanese a Uniball white pen um, or this one I'm using, which is again, a fine tip Posca pen um, because I love white. It's sort of a staple pen I use all the time. I often repeat the polka dots. I could repeat them um, maybe up in this area. I'm just deciding if I wanna do that. I think I'm gonna mix it up and not do that this time. And uh, yeah, that's all I'm going to do today. I'm um, yeah, wishing you a lovely weekend and thanks for watching.